Welcome back. We are at home again. I know it's been a while and you guys probably have not celebrated a lot of things, birthdays and occasions to, uh, to eat a cake. And uh, my fiance who's filming today again has reminded me that I have never really baked a cake for her, even though we walk together every single day. So today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect chocolate cake. I'm going to make it for her. Uh, perfect chocolate cake for every occasion with using only two recipes. The cake has a base and a ganache for the, the filling and for the frosting. And this is in your new book? This is my new cookbook, Everyone Can Bake. So I'm expecting it to look just like this. <laughs> I will try. I have to actually used uh, containers from uh, food deliveries that I've kept to uh, mise out, meaning like scale out all my ingredients before I start. So I've divided all the ingredients into two different sections. What I call the dries, which is all the dry ingredients, flour, cocoa powder, sugar, baking powder, and all the wet ingredients, which is, in that case, the milk, uh, the oil, and the eggs. So I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to put all the dry ing ingredients together first, then I'll add all the wet. Let's get started with the flour, the cocoa powder, the sugar, Regular uh, caster sugar, a uh, little bit of salt, baking soda, and baking powder. So this is all my dry ingredients. I'm just gonna stir it to make sure it's all combined together. We're gonna add the uh, two uh, large eggs to this. So when I crack the egg, I always do it on a flat surface and not on the side of the bowl. The reason why is that I want to make sure I don't break the shell inside the egg. And then it's going to end up in the mixing bowl if I do it on the side here. So it was on a flat surface, so the, the egg doesn't crack inside. I'm going to add uh, grapeseed oil. So the uh, oil will make keep the cake very, very moist. But people can just do like regular vegetable or canola or olive oil. Exactly. Any, any other oil would also work. I like to use olive oil actually. Um, something not too spicy that has nice flavor. So we're gonna add half of the milk. Keep on stirring it. I don't add all the liquid at once because I don't want everything to get lumpy. It's all coming together. And I'm gonna add the rest of the liquid right here. So you can see it's a fairly simple recipe. It only takes a minute or so to mix together. That's pretty much it. Everything is combined together. It's smooth. It uh, smells like chocolate. <laughs> it looks delicious. I'm gonna use uh, my uh, my mold, the mold that I love to have at home, uh, the cheesecake mold. It's a non-stick mold. I still put a little bit of butter and flour to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm gonna put my butter right in there. That's it, and you can see. Everything gets pretty smooth, pretty flat, very easily. We're going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. How long to wait? Uh, it's going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. While my cake is baking, I'm going to do the ganache. Ganache is the filling for, for the cake, essentially cream and chocolate. I always use the 66% chocolate. Uh, this one is uh, nice and rich. Uh, the quality of the chocolate you use is very important. And then we have the cream and the milk which uh, this is the base that where you can infuse the flavor. So if you want to use uh, orange zest or lemon zest, you can do so. If you want to use vanilla, you, you can add it, add it there. If you want to use a little bit of uh, alcohol, a little bit of rum, you can also do so in, uh, in the liquid. I'm going to add a little bit of the liquid to the chocolate, about half of it. And I'm going to let, it, let the chocolate melt. So this step, is very important. You don't want to add all your liquid at once. You want to add it little bit by little. The first half is really to melt the chocolate. And what we're trying to do here is actually to emulsify the liquid into the chocolate. And can you use something that is in milk? Can you use coconut milk or? You can use all different type of milk. Uh, if you want to use regular milk, almond milk, coconut milk will work very well with this recipe as well. Once my liquid is incorporated here, I'm going to add the rest. I'm 
I go from the center and I create an emulsion. You can see the texture and the color is changing in the center and it's spreading on the outside. And at the very end, we're gonna add a little bit of butter. Uh, the butter is tempered, so it's from temperature. So don't add your butter too cold, otherwise you won't be able to emulsify the butter over the ganache. What does the butter do? The butter will just give the, this a smooth uh, texture when you eat it, it's gonna be creamy. So this is gonna be uh, the, the filling for our cake. So our cake is gonna be cut into three pieces. The ganache is gonna be in between, so it's gonna be the foundation, the cement of our cake. Then we're gonna use the same ganache, a different way to glaze the cake or to frost the cake. We're almost there. Okay, and then eventually you put it in the fridge so that it sets. So you can leave it on your counter for, uh, for a little bit or you can put it in the fridge to uh, speed up the process a little bit. So okay. our cake looks pretty much done here. So it took a little bit longer than when I planned it. Uh, this took actually uh, 40 to 45 minutes. I'm gonna do our test knife to make sure it's fully cooked. So we're gonna go right in the center. Comes our cake. Right. Gonna let it cool a little bit and then we'll slice it to put the cake. All right, our cake is now cold, and as you can see, it's a shape. It's a little bit like a, of a dome. Uh, it's okay. Uh, don't worry too much about it. We're gonna cut uh, three slices out of this, three thin slices. And for this, I'm gonna use a serrated knife or bread knife. That's very important. And it has like these little. These little teeth, yes, to okay. cut through the the bread. So we're gonna start from the bottom. It's a cake. We're gonna start from the bottom. <laughs> It's a cake. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna try to aim for like about a quarter of an inch. We're gonna sew very gently. So I'm not trying to push the knife inside. I'm just sewing very gently. I'm trying to, to, to draw a line essentially uh, on the outside of the cake. So you're just scoring it a So little I'm just bit. scoring, marking the, uh, the, the thickness of the first layer. And once I'm on the other side, which is right here, on the other side now. Now I have my line. Now I know the thickness of the cake. So I'm gonna to try to keep my blade really, really flat. I'm gonna start sewing a little bit, a little bit deeper. But I always look right here where the knife meet the, the scoring and I'm gonna sew gently. Keep my knife, my blade very, very straight. And you're gonna feel it gently like going a little bit deeper, little by little. And really the, the sewing uh, movement is very important so you don't break through the cake. And I, I can't tell, I, I'll get through it. So I'm gonna remove my blade. Mm. And I have a perfect thin slice of the cake for the bottom. So you have my first slice, I'm gonna do the same thing all over again. Cake that was wasted. We're gonna do a quadruple layer cake. Yes, we only four layers today. Okay, ready to assemble. We're ready to go with the ganache now. So we're gonna take the first layer of uh, the cake. We're gonna put it. I have a gold ball here, a cake board, and that will help me uh, move the cake around. And if you don't have a gold board, you can also use a plate. So I have my ganache right here. So the ganache have been, uh, has been going in and out of the fridge and I've been mixing it. So as you can see, it's like a very creamy, almost like toothpaste texture. So that's a very important texture to, to have. If it's too hard, it's gonna be very hard to build. If it's too soft, it's gonna be liquidy. So you want this creamy texture. And please. So you can slightly microwave it and whip it if it's too hard, If you it's think? too cold, you can microwave very, very gently, like very light. I'm gonna spread the ganache into the cake, right? Okay. So always go from the inside out. So we put about the same thickness of uh, uh, the cake. We're gonna go to the side, okay. scrape the excess right here, and run the same thing uh, four times. And at this point, you can also add uh, stuff inside the cake. You can add uh, caramelized nuts, or um, any, anything you, you like to, to add, any chocolate, chocolate chips. That works very well as well with this cake. 
שזה עושה גם מהיר. And it's okay if it slightly comes out the sides, right? It's okay if it comes out of the side because we're gonna uh, smooth it out and clean it at the end. Sometimes people also uh, like to soak the biscuit, the cake, so you can soak it with a, a, a syrup, with a rum or whiskey. That works very well for this kind mm. of cake as well. Beautiful. And then the last one, it doesn't matter which side is up, right? the last piece of cake. It doesn't really uh, matter. You just uh, want to make sure that that was the bottom of the cake. So I'm going to put it in inside. You want it very, very flat. You want to make sure it's uh, level. I'm going to finish with a little bit more ganache on top. So you can see this texture is like actually perfect to finish this cake. So you can just frost the whole cake? You can frost the whole cake right now. Yeah, I'm pushing it to the side so we can actually add more ganache and cover the side of the cake. And now I'm gonna pick that up. That's why it's good to have a, a cake board or plate. And I'm gonna cover the side of the cake. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna glaze it anyways. Exactly. We're gonna uh, glaze it at the end with the same ganache. So we just want to cover the side of the cake right now. I, actually, one of the techniques I've learned uh, in the kitchen, when I first start working in the kitchen, is actually you have to be able to hold the cake and spin it in one hand. So you can actually frost the cake. So with your left hand, you should be able to spin the cake. You don't have to do this right away. It's actually <laughs> a little bit technical. You don't want to drop the cake, but it's a, a good way for uh, being able to, to work with your two hands and still being able to spin the cake as you go. And so this is not a perfect icing. This is just the crumb coat, which keeps everything smooth so that you can do a much better finishing, right? Exactly. Okay, I'm gonna put it back now. Okay. All right, we've got our cake that I finished glazing. Here I have my, uh, my uh, sheet tray with the plastic wrap. And I put plastic wrap to actually make, to make it easier to collect the ganache at the end. I'm gonna have a glazing rack just over it. The same ganache that I use for the inside and uh, the outside actually melted in the microwave just for 30 to 45 seconds. So nice warm, it's silky, shiny. And this I'm going to use to finish the, the cake and glaze it. So it's pretty cold right now. I'm gonna use an offset spatula which I highly recommend if you want to do this, this step. Uh, an offset spatula that will help us smooth out the top of the ganache. I'm gonna quickly, uh, while this is hot, I'm gonna pour most of the ganache in the center, so very quickly, and then just uh, go once with the spatula, and that'll be it. So you can't touch it too much. You can't touch it too much. So you, you pour, pour a lot of the ganache all at once, so it goes all the way on the side of the cake. Then you take your spatula, you push it one side and push it the other side. And that's it. Don't that's touch it. it. Don't touch it anymore. That should cover the entirety of the cake all around. If it doesn't for some reason, you can always go back with a little bit of ganache with your spatula. But right now it looks, it looks perfect. Beautiful. I can see your reflection. Wave high. <laughs> so you know, you're going to pick it up with the spatula. And the last little step, if the ganache drips, you just cut it with the, uh, the, the spatula. And we'll place it Beautiful. on my cake stand. You can also decorate it with a little bit of cocoa powder, a little bit of cho chocolate chips, or anything you like. That's it. Little secret to how to cut perfect cake slices. So boiling water in a container. I use a very thin blade. And you leave the blade in the water for like at least five, ten for seconds. For like five to ten seconds. So it warms up. So everything is hot, should get clean. Just wipe down the blade. And then I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to put it right here. Beautiful. 